start again. Welcome. <laughs> we're very happy to have you here. And we're going to give you some good resources so that you can help your kids through this season uh, in Starry Starry Night. Uh, so the, the event is on a two year rotation. Every year, the kids will study the solar system and constellations and star charts. Every other year, we'll have a special topic. We'll have deep space, a deep space focus, and then the opposite years will have a solar system objects focus. And this year is the solar system focus. Um, I will share my screen here because I would like to go through the rules quickly. All right. So part one is going to be written questions about our solar system. There are uh, there is a glossary posted on MacombSO.org. Uh, the kids will have to understand orbital mechanics, the differences between rotation and revolution, why we have our days, months, years, and how the planets and sun and, and moon, um, the Earth, the sun and moon, uh, how they how they accomplish you know a day, a month, a year. Uh, they'll have to understand the seasons, why we have seasons. They'll have to know eight moon phases. And then they will have to be able to understand solar eclipses and lunar eclipses, why they occur, uh, what happens during them, the differences between the two. They will, this year, they will have to understand um, different characteristics of the planets. They will not have to know numbers. They will not have to know, you know, the period of rotation or the temperature or anything uh, of, of the planets. They will have to understand maybe which planet has the most moons, which planet has the widest temperature variance. Uh, what's the order of the planets from the sun, which is the largest planet, which is the smallest planet, things like that. But they will not have to know numbers. Then uh, they will have to be able to identify uh, visually photos of planets and planetary features. And I'll show you where you, I, I have posted all of those. The second part is going to be looking at the celestial sphere. It's essentially just knowing these terms. They will have to know their constellations, these specific constellations and the star or star cluster Listen, if it's listed. Hi. Okay. And I will show you what they will see in a, in a couple of minutes and how they will see the star charts. Part three is a series of questions and visual identifications on the non-planetary members of the solar system. So they'll have to know what meteoroids, meteors and meteorites are, comets and asteroids. What are the differences between all those? There will be specific, uh, the, the dwarf planets, they are also called Plutoids and some of them are called Transneptunians. Uh, they'll have to know where they are and be able to recognize a picture of them. Moons, in addition to our own moon, I've listed the moons that they will need to be able to recognize in a photo and they should know a few of the characteristics. What makes that moon interesting? Why, you know, why did we pick those moons? Uh, they'll have to know the solar system, the outer solar system, the Kuiper belt or cloud interplanetary medium. And then there is a glossary, a separate glossary for the solar system. There's a general glossary and a separate solar system glossary. Then this year, our special topic, we have missions. And so they will uh, be able to match the mission with uh, what important findings that mission um, found. Each question is going to be worth one, two or three points, depending on difficulty. And the whole test will be about 130 points. There will be uh, tiebreakers that are designated as such. OK, so I want to take you through what the test is like. The first. First uh, five minutes we'll do all together. The kids will look at 10 photos. It could be a planet. It could be a planetary feature. 
It could be a moon. And these photos, the ones that I will choose the 10 from, are posted on MacombSO.org. So we've got all the planet pictures. We've got moons. We've got special features on those things. These are the pictures that I will be choosing from. So if the kids rec can recognize these pictures, they're golden. Uh, then we'll have a series of written questions that will cover all the topics and the rules. There will be multiple choice, fill in the blank, short answer, matching, things like that. Uh, for matching, we'll have a section on glossary terms and then another section on matching the missions with the findings from the mission. Those will be the matching sections. They may also be asked to draw a couple of simple diagrams like draw a solar eclipse, the, you know, the relation between the sun, the moon, and the earth. Draw a particular moon phase. Draw what the sun and earth look like, looks like during a particular season, that kind of thing. Um, there is a mission list for that section on the website. So we've got mm, 10 or 12 missions and they should understand what's on that page. There are sample test questions also on MacombSO.org to give you an idea of the difficulty, the range of difficulty levels. So there will be some easy questions that are worth one points. For example, the scientific term for a planet's trip around the sun is blank. And a more difficult question might be, name a planet that rotates in a retrograde motion and then they would have to fill that in. So that's a much more difficult question and that would be worth three points. So this is a resource for you to kind of see what we think are our easier questions, what are harder questions on the various topics, okay? So we have that resource for you. Now, next up on the test will be the star charts, the constellations that they have to know. So we've posted these constellations, these star charts online uh, also, and the kids will, you'll start with this star chart with the names of the uh, constellations, the outline of the constellations, and you'll start teaching them just those specific ones that are on the, in the rules. They don't have to know every single constellation in the sky. So you'll start teaching them here. And you'll teach them little tricks like speed to spica or, um, you know, what they they should understand what the circumpolar constellations are, which ones are in the sky all year. Some of them are not in the sky all year, things like that. Then eventually they will get to the point where you can take away the names and they would name the outline, name the constellation that way. And then they'll get to the point where this is what they get and this is what they'll they'll get on the test they'll get a blank star chart you can see ursa major right here okay so they get a blank star chart and we will circle a constellation or we'll point an arrow at a particular cluster or star that they will have to identify okay and believe it or not, the kids can do this. They actually get good at it. You'll probably have one member of your team that loves the star charts and they'll be the star chart kid, okay? Um, then uh, at the end of the test, there will be some separate tiebreakers and they will cover the same scope, but they'll be of greater depth. Um, at the practice tournaments, if you attend a practice tournament, you will not get receive the test back after the kids take the test. But what you will receive is a breakdown, a score breakdown of how your kids did on this test. So here you see the general solar system. There might be eight points possible and your kids got six. Um, moon phases, maybe they got three, you know. Planetary moons, oh, they got 15. They're good at those. But, you know, planets, mm, they're not so great. Maybe we need to study more. So this will give you a, a clue as to uh, where you need to focus your efforts going forward to prepare for the uh, 
the regional test, okay? Uh, the breakdown is approximate down here, approximately 40% from part one of the rules, 20% from part two, 25 part three, 15 part four. So um, that's give or take, that will be the breakdown of the test. So you can figure out where to spend your time, okay? Um, the goal will be not to trick the students. We don't want to have, you know, trick questions or anything. We want them to have a good experience. The test will be long. The test will be uh, some easy, some more difficult questions. So they should not expect necessarily to finish the test, but we do want it to be a good experience for them. Um, so we won't be asking any questions that will deliberately try to trick them, okay? All of the information that we'll cover on the test will be in the resources that we've given you, okay? Also posted on the website is um, a page of useful online resources. These are where I will get my information when I'm writing the test. So. You can find a lot on the internet on comets, asteroids, and meteoroids, but these are the resources that I will be using. All right. So it would behoove you to look at these resources as opposed to everything else that's out there on the internet. Okay. So I have some dwarf planet information, moons, Kuiper belt, things like that. Okay. So I've given that to you, some videos, some uh, internet pages. It's a mix of things. Um, also on our website, we have a PowerPoint presentation, and this was at a STARS workshop that we gave several years ago. There's a little bit on each topic in the rules on this PowerPoint, so this could give you somewhere to start. For example, on rotation and revolution, what are the key concepts there? We've embedded some video clips. This is what you need to know. How many Earth rotations? How many days in one revolution around the sun? And so on. Okay. Seasons, we've got a couple of slides on seasons. Okay, so this will, we've got a few slides on eclipses. This will be some place to start. All right, this is a really good place to start to introduce all these topics to your kids. Okay, these are the moon phases that they need to know also. Okay, um, all of these resources are on the macombso.org website on our Starry Starry Night page. You'll go into the 22, no. 2022 events and rules. Go down to Starry Starry Night. You can get the rules here. And all of these resources that I've shown you are right here. Okay. 